Hi everybody, I'm really excited because today is the full plot tour of my tropical island here in Palea. I have called it Secret Pearl Beach and the first thing I've done is spread out. You can see my harvest house here with a little small room and a hallway. This is my house on the island. It also has a fireplace and a pavilion with kind of a special area in it, and that's what I consider my personal space on the island. But there are guest spaces that are each designed for my three sisters. So individual harvest houses, only one of them has a hallway section, and otherwise they're individually decorated. Obviously there are a lot of other areas on the island, and I can't wait to show you, so let's get down in and see. The island begins with a wide opening welcoming entrance. I wanted to be able to see back into the plot more than a lot of plots I visit where there's just a little bit of a space directly into the first building. Instead, welcoming and open. And you can see one of the first things here in the entryway is a stage. I would like to keep this plot for a very long time and when I have people over to visit or to hang out on streams or other things, it's fun to have something to do. And here we can change into different outfits and do little shows at the stage here on the island. I told you before that there are three guest houses, sort of rental properties here on the island, and the first one here is after my sister Anna, and this one has kind of a peaceful, upscale, beachy vibe to it. I love the cool blue color, really brought in strong in contrast to the sort of the sand colors and the various different things that might be beautiful along the beach. It's, it's more of a, a luxury place to stay. All of the guest houses also have these beautiful bay windows because I felt like they looked more like a house I would see on a beach and so it was fun to put collections of little items of lots of really interesting things on each of those window sills. My favorite part about this guest house are the decorations here on the table in the middle of the room. It's definitely what inspired the view, the little flotsam fish decoration on the beech wood and the shells. That's what inspired the theme. Other than that, the color and the vibe are all inspired by my sister. That's the first one, but let's walk along the little path on the beach here. You can see there are beautiful little areas to sit, to enjoy the water, to relax with some food or drinks, and they are going to take us back to the next one. There is a little sneaky secret in the back with the pirate stuff we'll talk about later, and down here on the very end is a perfect little sitting spot. You can see the lighthouse all the way through, which I really love the way that the swing kind of frames the lighthouse and the dock. These little rock piles that are on the sand next to me are also kind of a personal nod. I live here in Wisconsin and on Lake Michigan there are places where people have been putting together little piles of rocks in the beach for a very long time so it felt like good tradition. Okay let's pop in and look at the guest house inspired by my second sister Cynthia. Cynthia is actually the next oldest under me and she loves everything that is cozy. She loves warm colors and she loves reading. For that reason, I really wanted this place to be the type of area that feels like you would gather together your family in the evening to read a book or cozy up on a really nice comfy and cozy chair to disappear into a novel. Everything in this particular cottage was put together either to be something for enjoying books and reading or to be a place to enjoy cooking and eating good food with friends and family. As I head down the path with these little pavers and all of the different flowers, I have hit the max number of flowers that you can have on a plot. And you'll also see the pavers have a little bit of a glitch as they kind of look funny and change size a little bit. Just ignore that. I think they'll be changing that glitch sometime soon. I love the summer items that we just recently got. They fit this tropical vibe so well. But we'll look at more of these things in a minute. Let's pop in to the third cottage. This one is inspired by my sister Shelby, my baby sister, who is full of life and adventure. She loves bright colors and really beautiful things that represent nature and life and greenery. 
this particular plot then has more plants than the others but it also has fun place to cook places to collect items just like the other things and a really beautiful place to read or enjoy the indoor space too I loved using the Emberborn stuff mixed with some of the other items in the game. More than all the other places I've designed, this one has a really eclectic variation of spaces and of different furnitures from different sets, which I really enjoyed. The other areas on the island are meant to be beautiful community areas to gather and enjoy the beautiful environment. This is the fire pit. I just imagine everyone gathering around here late as the sun sets to roast marshmallows, tell stories, maybe sing songs. And then there are these places to sit and actually enjoy the beach. So this is a little bit of a specialty spot I put together. And then we have the new spring items. I can't wait to get the umbrella. I haven't been lucky enough to find it yet, but I'll definitely be adding it in several places to the beach areas. The path leads to this part because this is the dock that goes if you're going to go straight to Bahari Bay, if you're not familiar with this particular plot. But let's go closer into the middle. Several areas on this island are reminiscent of memories I have as a child when we would visit my grandparents cabin in Colorado. While it's a very different atmosphere, the way that you would visit to enjoy the outdoors is the same. So this is a little family picnic spot. The giant fish back here is kind of an honor place. I figure sort of the mascot of the island. We've got both a small one and a large one that I've been able to get from playing hot pot. In fact, I have a couple of him and I just figured we needed to use him somehow. In the lore of the island, he's what you come and you know rub his nose for luck or something like you would do with a giant rock or statue someplace. You can see the areas along the beach over here have a few of these planks that I've stacked up to look like driftwood that has just kind of pushed up onto the shore. And as we go back into the path area, we'll pass there's a little latrine and then we get into some areas that are more functional. I put the industrial dresser out here to look like a tool shed. I have the aquarium here because it's a beautiful place for it. And then this is where I do real work. I have my actual benches for creating and customizing and smelting objects. Under the Kilma Pavilion is meant to be a beautiful little bit of a private area to enjoy the hot tub. I wanted this area to be a little more closed in so it could feel private but at the same time enjoy the view of the outdoor area so there's a lot of plants in here too and I've tucked it in so it's sort of closer to my personal spot. Speaking of, I should probably show you what is inside my personal home. I want to share that my personal cottage on the island is not inspired by me. It is inspired by my memories. Because we visited my grandparents' cabin a lot when we were growing up, it had been in the family for a long time and things had come into that space as they had redesigned at home or built something new or all the kind of clutter and collections that filled the space were from hikes and trips every time we went down to the beach or decided to polish a rock or make a fairy house. To help with that vibe, I used as many items as I could find from the makeshift set. That's the one that you fish up. And I really like the way that the items look like they've been handyman put together. I also wanted to make sure that the spaces were really full, right? That every single little corner and nook was a memory from something. And so again, this is, this is more of a heritage house for me. The lore of my character is that she probably lives on a different lot most of the time, but during the summer or if she just needs to take a break or head out to someplace new, she comes to the family cottage. A proper rustic getaway to enjoy the sand and the beach and the water and a little bit of a slower life. Because I was doing my house as a memory of sorts, that is part of why I added some family heritage into the other cottages. Now, back here is less memory and just more playful. 
you see the deeper, long, ancient lore of the island is that a pirate ship wrecked here. And you can see this because the path, if I kind of run through this area really quickly, you'll see that there is a shipwreck down the beach on the other side of it. After the pirates wrecked, they put together this beautiful pirate uh, treehouse, playhouse, hut thing. Anyhow, after they put the shelter together, it eventually became a play space for all the children visiting the island. Instead of a pirate treehouse, it's a children's playhouse and a secret getaway. Whether or not the shipwrecked pirate island is real or not has been lost to the history of the island. But my character would certainly have a lot of beautiful memories from playing here as a child. I would love if you would come and tour my island as well. You just search Katie Space Twinkle. This plot was particularly fun to work on because of the background with the beautiful ocean environment and I love all the cozy spaces where your character can enjoy the beach. With that, I wish you all the best. Paleo Day.